Carolyn. Hi, and welcome. Welcome to our second uh, Talks with the Leadership. Uh, I am Carolyn Satter. I am president of USITT. Uh, it is a title that I cherish and am very excited to be in. Um, but the only thing I have to share at this point is on November 11th will be our next board meeting. Uh, the Friday prior in the weekly will appear the, uh, the Zoom um, information to join us to listen in to what is happening at a board meeting. And I cordially invite all of you to be in attendance. David? Hi, everyone. I'm David Grindle, Executive Director at USITT. Wanted to catch people up on a few things um, that are coming down the line. Um, if you go to our events page, which you can find in the hamburger on in the right hand corner of our website or on the mobile, you'll see our event listings. Um, please note that uh, next week, the Research Activities Committee is sponsoring a grant writing workshop. This is especially focused on applying for the purpose grants that are open for our members to apply for. Then on Tuesday, uh, November 9th, is an online webinar, Fall Protection Plans uh, and Theatrical Reality. We have our board meeting on the 11th. And um, I'd like to remind folks, if you you are or you know someone who is interested in pursuing a graduate degree in theater or uh, theater production design stage management you name it uh the link uh online graduate recruiting weekend is december 1st and 2nd this is our annual project that we do in partnership with SETC, and uh registrations are open for that uh, weekend. Um, speaking of registrations, uh, we are just uh, finishing up testing on conference registration uh, and it will open to members in the coming days. So please be on the lookout. Um, if you said you wanted credit, uh, if you had registered for the 2020 conference in Houston, and said, no, just leave me with credit. Um, really be on the lookout for emails because you're gonna have a unique code to you that you'll use during registration to be able to apply that uh, credit you have. And I remind you that you can also uh, use that credit for membership if you need to renew. Uh, the first month is a member only registration time. And there uh, are some incentives for full conference registration that you'll see in the email. Um, also to be on the lookout, uh, the Engineering Commission uh, has been partnering with several groups uh, looking at terms we use in theater that maybe we should consider some other terms for. Uh, and the Terminology Working Group has been working several months now uh, on this project, and it is now ready to be released for public comment. So I encourage you to take a moment and look at that when it comes out. Uh, it'll have uh, time for you to respond with an online form so that we collect all the responses uh, in the same manner and order and that group can go back and read through them and talk about them. But I really do encourage that. Um, and because it is fall and some people get into the mood of fall cleaning, um, we will do another uh, book drive in partnership with African Theater Association. So if you have books about theater, theater design, theater management uh, that are holding down your bookcases at the moment and maybe haven't been off there in a while, as I think all of us can probably attest to, um, and you'd like those to go to good use, we will continue to partner with AFTA and uh, this spring, uh, either you can actually from now until the conference, you can drop books in the mail to us here at the national office, or you can bring them with you to Baltimore for the conference and we'll collect them there. 
then they will um, be distributed to libraries uh, at universities across uh, the membership of AFTA uh, later in 2022. So those are the ongoing projects at the moment. Uh, Paul Bruner, I believe you're next on this. I am, thank you, uh, Carolyn and David. Um, the one item I'd like to uh, uh, share today is, is to discuss a little bit the uh, changes to our election schedule. Um, USITT has uh, elected our board of directors, uh, elected leadership uh, in the same manner for many decades, the vast majority of our 60 plus years of existence. Uh, and rather recently, in just the past few months, uh, in conversations with USITT Legal Counsel, we realized that we were not doing it in a manner that conforms to US uh, to uh, New York State uh, statutes. So over the period of several weeks, uh, the bylaws committee worked um, that legal counsel to better understand uh, the changes that were made a few years ago to New York statutes to understand how we should be conducting our elections so that they conform to those things. And uh, we are making some changes to that schedule. So essentially we can no longer uh, hold an online election uh, in November as we have always done. And it is moving to uh, basically the online election process will open uh, in roughly the middle of January. And it has to be within a certain number of days of our annual membership meeting uh, at the national conference. So um, that is ultimately what's kind of driving that change. Um, so we are through a series of different things through this announcement, through an email blast that just went out today to our membership uh, through USITT News are trying to get the message out because we know a lot of our members, uh, especially the longstanding ones kind of expect to see a ballot here in a few days uh, to start the election. And that will not be the case for the first time in a very long time. So. Um, but again, those changes are things we simply have to do, and we work very closely again with this legal counsel to help us figure out how that process should be uh, carried out and follow the statutes. So um, with that, uh, I don't think there's anything else for me to share about that. Um, I'll hand it back to Carolyn and David for any, any additional items or questions maybe from the group that's here with us today. Uh, well, Paul, I think that it, you should, we should note that the candidates uh, did get individual notice of this change in schedule prior to it going out to the full membership uh, with helping them understand the various Easter eggs that are hidden in New York uh, nonprofit law regarding yep. elections. That's correct. Thanks for clarifying that. Yes. Yeah. Carolyn? Ah, I have nothing here. I'm interested in seeing what our um, audience has to ask. Mm. <laughs> Chime in if you have a question. I don't think we have to go through the hand raising. We have uh, so many <laughs> people here. Yeah. Gosh, the pressure's on. Am I the only audience member here? <laughs> seems... You, 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 and Dan. That's everyone. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. But he's he's a past president, so yeah. you're a past vice president. Past so I mean, you're <laughs> <laughs> but much more past <laughs> than he is. He's the immediate, immediate. Um, I guess um, uh, just a random question that I have is, how did we get so far behind in keeping up with New York laws? Because these laws came out what five years ago. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, I think a couple of things happened. Um, the, yeah, the statutes, the, the act took, uh, was elected into existence, I guess, in 2013 and took effect in 2014. So it has been a number of years since that was in place. And our most recent 
uh, review of a legal review of bylaws was done just a few years before that. So um, there hasn't been a regular practice of doing what, you know, we probably wouldn't do it annually, but you know, there hasn't been a regular practice of doing a regular legal review of our bylaws, um, or at least not in recent years. And that is something that hasn't been done and we are going to be doing moving forward about every three years is what uh, the legal counsel recommended is a good pace uh, to have them review things and compare it against existing statutes. Um, so yeah, that is something we simply uh, weren't doing and need to do moving forward. So that's a very good question. So they don't, they're not proactive and contact you and say, we've just made a bunch of changes and you might want to take a look at it. It's up to the institution to, as you say, to conduct a review every periodically yeah. in order to. Yeah. Then yeah. yes, Andy, and, mm -hmm. and the state of New York loves nothing more than changing one thing in the code. And uh, one of the interesting things that, that changed, but only temporarily, that we're having to deal with is that New York law is very specific. The meeting of the membership must be in person. They don't care where you have it, but it must be in person. And an exemption was uh, put through during the pandemic that allowed us to have virtual membership meetings. Um, that exemption expires on December 31st of this year. And I have written to every New York senator and representative that I thought might listen and begged them to change that to a permanent exemption because we would be better served as an organization to have more people engaged with a virtual membership meeting than necessarily an in-person or to at least give us the option. Mm -hmm. um, and I have gotten no response, except for one who told me they're not my representative. Uh, <laughs> um, well, but that is, that's one of those odd little moments in New York law. It sounds as though we can have a hybrid system of voting though, that there can be online voting as well as in-person voting. Yes. Yeah, and my fantasy was that if the voting does indeed happen at the conference, is it possible that we might have a higher return on the ballots than we usually get? I think it's a possibility. Maybe. It's, an assumption. it's an assumption that some of us have been making. Like we we think we might have some more in-person engagement there. It's possible. Yeah. Um, we have this past election, we had a, about a 30% uh, voter engagement in, in our past election, which seems like a low number, but it is a huge improvement over past year. Yeah. We were in the teens and the previous year we were about 20, 22%. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, as David has kind of shared with us in conversations, that's it's quite an envious percentage compared to most organizations that are out there that okay. have that kind of uh, level of in, uh, voter engagement. So yeah. always room for improvement, but we are in a good place. And I, I think I'm not, I'm gonna speak slightly off the cuff here, Sandy, that the intent is to still be able to use the same electronic voting at the conference, um, so because that then um, ensures that that you're in that group of eligible voters. But we would also still be able to check that and confirm uh, the way that system works. Once you voted, it, it, it doesn't encourage a Chicago style voting, no offense to our Chicago members. Um, but it does lock you out once you voted once. No, and no ballot stuffing. No ballot stuffing. And no uh, ads. Uh, but it is it, it is interesting because the law is very specific that you might you may affix the eligible voters no more than 50 days prior to the annual meeting and no fewer than 10 days prior to the annual meeting. Oh. But everything is tied to that annual meeting of the membership in person. Huh. Well, that will make our annual meetings more interesting. 
Won't it though? There'll be like a, there'll be a moment of suspense. Yeah, debates. Um, yeah, would we tally up the votes and have an announcement at the end of the conference then? Or? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that becomes part of the party. That is, and that is the, one of the exciting things is that with the electronic balloting, we're able to get that very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't have a, the office staff isn't hand counting everything. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, to, and to clarify, the voting needs to be tallied and announced in that membership meeting of the members. So we'll be tallying oh. The, oh, yeah. the online votes oh. collected in advance of the membership meeting and adding those to the in-person uh, votes that we will collect electronically, but at the conference, <laughs> put that all together and announce those in the membership meeting. That's the key to this. It has to happen in a in member meeting. meeting. Yeah. And I, I will, as secretary, get, I will essentially announce the results and ask the membership to accept the results. So, so just to be clear, in case there's any confusion, uh, as the ballot goes out, if you choose, you can go ahead and uh, vote electronically. If, and even if you are going to the conference. Correct. Good. So the ballots will go out. People will be able to vote anytime. And what we will do is announce that, that the, the electronic ballots close at, you know, if it's a 10 a.m. meeting, it closes at 10.15. So, and we encourage people to make sure you got your voting. We send last minute reminders. And even if you are not at the conference, you're still able to vote right up until that time. And then once it's uh, closed off, then uh, the tally is there for us. <laughs> Does anybody else wonder why these nonprofit legal people even care about some of this stuff? Okay. Yes. I mean, the short answer is yes. I wonder why. <laughs> I, I right. wonder okay. why in Article 6, when you get to the end, there's an entire section about infant members. No, I lie you not. Section 622. And, and those are actual chronological infants as opposed to behave like infants. Correct. Yeah. A corporation okay. may treat an infant who holds a membership certificate or card or capital certificate or bond of such corporation as a member. Is there a voting age? Um. We, we that is have. up to um, that is up to uh, your bylaws to set. Um, mm -hmm. There is an age to be a board member, according to New York law, unless mm -hmm. you are an organization specifically dedicated to youth sports or youth development. Hmm. In the world of things that make you go, hmm. And, mm -hmm. and as I was saying to someone, um, the other thing that's interesting about this, Sandy, is you would think with 24 sections in the law about members, it would talk have a section labeled elections. But it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You have to read all of those sections because how you can run the election is in one section, who can vote is in another section, and when they vote is in yet a third section. I guess they want to make sure you actually read it. Mm, mm. So it is, it is truly fascinating. So. Are there other questions, Sandy or Dan? <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Mark and Leanne, US staff members can ask questions if you'd so like. Mm -hmm. 
Well, for, for those of you who are watching this recording later, um, the, the normal uh, final Wednesday of, uh, of November would be the day prior to Thanksgiving. Um, and so I think we're going to look at affixing a different date for the November leadership listening, and we'll get that published because um, I'm not sure that folks really want, I mean, maybe you do. It's, I, I personally uh, would rather we not do it that day, um, but uh, we will reach out with a revised date uh, so that we can do this. Um, and if nothing else, if you can attend, you at least have the uh, benefit of these recordings. Um, but I do hope that if you're listening to this, you will join us for a future one. Or if you have a question you want answered that you can't get to us, please email it to president at usitt.org or to david at usitt.org. And we'll get the question into the hands of the person who needs to have the answer for you. David, um, you know, an interesting question that somebody may be asking is if between leadership listening um, sessions, if they have a question that pops up, we are definitely, I'm saying I am definitely available. Um, and, and if it's something I cannot answer immediately, but can get back to you by all means, uh, I'll be more than happy to do. It's, you don't have to wait uh, uh, to be in part uh, into this arena. We are more than willing to take and answer whatever we can throughout, uh, throughout the year. So it's just an open invitation. You guys know how to find me. And, and we'll President bring the question, USITT. Pardon me? question into this meeting, even if we answer it ahead of time, in case other people have that question mm -hmm. out there. By all means. Um, I am pleased to let folks know that we are still on track to head for an in-person conference in Baltimore at the beginning of March. Our exhibitors are taking booths. We have um, a, a lot of hands-on learning that the commissions and the exhibitors are working on developing so that we can get into the touching of, of equipment again uh, and, and not necessarily just looking at screens. And this is across all of our commissions. It's really exciting to see the work uh, that folks have brought around. Um, I'm also pleased to say that we're gonna get to see uh, the plot bot that our innovation grant uh, funded uh, that has been in research uh, imagine, a, a, as best I can describe it, a Roomba uh, that can figure out where to put plot points on a stage so you know where to, to uh, hang motors and things like that. Um, this is the work that uh, Dr. Shannon Robert and the team at Clemson University have been doing. And uh, I'm kind of excited to see what they bring around. It's, it's definitely an interesting idea. Um, and so we have that opportunity to, to see the work of this uh, institute funded research. Uh, if there are no other questions, uh, I'd like to thank everyone and please be on the lookout to the weekly news for uh, the date of our next leadership listing. And the information on listening in on our November the 11th board meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.